<laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to Let's, Let's Talk, Talk Books Unscripted. Our dog George is is making an appearance. He is wanting to be in this video. You want to say hi, bud? Okay. No, he doesn't want to. This is George. <laughs> hi. So this is a series we're doing, husband and wife who love to read. This is unedited, unscripted. Mm -hmm. So what you see, what you hear, that's what you get. Mm -hmm. That's why George is in it today. <laughs> what are we drinking? Good old H2O, hydrating. Today's a water my, night. Using my giant Stanley, which I really like. Yeah. I like, I think I showed you last time, but I love my stickers. I like putting a whole bunch of ice in here. And yeah, iced water is the way to go. It's like basically the only way I like to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have to. Yeah, so. Not very exciting. We're not snacking on anything. I think I've asked before too. If you're a like evening snacker, mm -hmm. um, share with us what snack you're having so too. And I, I could use a snack maybe when we're done with this. Um, but yeah, I'm only going to touch on um, just one like quick book that I, or it's not a quick book, but uh, quickly uh, that I finished because I know I talked about it on our last one, so I did want to give you like my little very um, short review and then as you can see we have like a whole bunch of other books that we are not going to go into depth on but just wanted to share ones from um, certain categories uh, yeah. that um, one of you had asked us about so we will do that next but I'll start with this one um, where you end uh, this is a thriller that I just uh, finished um, was it yesterday yeah and yeah, like I said in my cover. It's a very cool co cover. Um, I think I said on our last one that I wasn't sure if I'd like be able to be here on stick to finish it. I was not able to. So yes, I finished during the day yesterday um, when my kiddos were playing nicely outside. So I was able to do that. It was a really nice day here yesterday. Um, so I was definitely enjoying some outdoor reading time. Um, but yeah, my overall thoughts were that I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, I think I mentioned on our last video that it felt a little like slower paced for me. Mm -hmm. And when I'm reading a thriller, I really want it to be like a little bit more like of a page turner um, where I just really can't wait to pick it up again or find out what happens next. And this one was just kind of not that for me, um, but it was not a bad book. I would still recommend it to the right audience because I mean, it's kind of funny that that is a thing, but slow burn thrillers are a thing, just okay. like slow burn romance. And I'm realizing that I don't think I like either one of those. Like some I people just, do though. Some, and some people some do. People so do. this book could really be for you. It definitely had the creep factor for sure. Um, but yeah, I just felt like I didn't fully connect with the um, two sisters in it. So that's kind of another thing for me. Um, but I did feel like once I hit like the 60% the mark, I was more invested and did want to see yeah. how it was going to wrap up and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, I did like it and you may love it. Um, so again, I would, I would encourage you to pick it up. Um, but that's that. And now we'll move on to a question that we got. Yeah, so we got two questions, two questions. Yes. That we're going to answer from subscribers. So if you want to see us answer a question, please drop it in the comments below and we'll maybe something we haven't talked yeah, about yeah we'll yet. try to answer it yeah. um in our next episode mm -hmm. so this one comes from jennifer if i say your name wrong, i'm so sorry <laughs> jennifer kusan <laughs> she said she loves watching our book chats which is great thank you very much but she was wondering if we both enjoyed reading as children or if it's just a hobby that started more as an adult hmm. that's a good question that is a good question i like that um, I loved reading as a child and especially loved being read to. So for me, it's been a lifelong love of reading and books. Um, yeah, I have some really, really positive memories, um, especially of my dad uh, reading to my brothers and me. Um, one of our favorite series was uh, the, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, so that's one that I actually would really love to revisit now as an adult because mm -hmm. it's been ages since um, I listened to them. So I don't even think I've like physically with my own eyeballs read mm -hmm. that series. Um, but hey, it still counts as reading just like an audiobook. So to me, that was an audiobook, you know, was listening to my dad um, read it. Uh, so that's like a series yeah, I'd love to go back to and to like introduce to our kids when they're a little bit older and would sit through it. Um, so yes, reading has been a very big part of my life, my whole life. <laughs> yeah, like looking back, I would say I wasn't a huge reader as a child. Mm -hmm. I do remember a period of collecting the Goosebumps books. <laughs> so it's a little shocking I didn't get more into horror. Mm -hmm. 
maybe it's still coming. But I've gone through phases, I would say. I, I remember always having books around in our house and picking them up. But I would say I never was a huge reader. I'd rather be outside playing. Mm -hmm. But I, I do recall times where I did enjoy reading. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely phases. Even it, even in my adulthood, I remember certain phases I went through of reading. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm in one of those phases now. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna leave I, this time I though. I hope he sticks yeah. with it. Um, cause, cause yeah, for me too, I feel like it kind of went more to the wayside at certain points. Um, cause when we first got together as a couple um, and got married, Sorry for the... <laughs> it was a fire truck. Oh, fire truck. Um, for the, the extra noise in the background. Um, and actually, it's our anniversary tomorrow, so we'll celebrate nine years of marriage. But it was just funny that we were talking recently how Corey was like, I don't remember you always being, like, next level obsessed with reading, though. Like, when we first started dating. Mm -hmm. And I did have books, though. I mean, like, we brought things into the relationship, and I definitely had, like, a shelf of yeah, we books. Both had but books. it wasn't, yeah. like, a ton by any means. So like I, I definitely still was a, called myself a reader at that time, but not to the point where I'm at right now. So I feel like, and I maybe said this in a previous episode, so sorry if this is re repeat, but I feel like when COVID hit, that's when I really like started getting more into it. And when I really dove into the world of bookstagram on Instagram mm -hmm. and was just like loving the book community and seeing what people were sharing that they were reading and loving and I was getting all these book recommendations, and so I really started to have mm -hmm. like a, an immense passion for it. Like again, not that I didn't like prior in my life or at different points of my life, but yeah, yeah, it it, it very much became an absolute favorite activity for me like a few years ago. Yeah, <laughs> and I shared with her that it was before we started dating where I actually was getting back into reading. I used to go to Starbucks like three or four times a week and just get a latte and read. But after we met, it kind of like- I don't remember, I don't I know. know that person. Yeah, she, he like was After we met, we both kind of just took a break either. from it. Mm -hmm. And now that, it's been good that we've kind of found it again. Mm -hmm. Cause it's been a really good, really good hobby. And it's a good community to be a part of. And something that we can connect over together. Yeah, it's something we can do together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can make funny reels, but we can also, you know, talk about reading. Yeah. And there's been a few books now that we have both read. Yeah. Which is kind of yeah. cool. Like we have like a own little mini book club. Mm -hmm. It's like, what did you think? What did you think? And I know there's a few books that I've read now that she hasn't read and vice yeah. versa. Yeah, and it's like, what do you think? What do you, mm -hmm. I can't wait for you to finish it. So mm -hmm. that was a good question. Thank you for asking that. Did she ask about us reading to our kids too? Or did I make yeah, that? She didn't mention okay. about us reading to our kids. I know we touched on that yeah, in the last episode. Yeah, we did touch episode. on that I showed a book that I'm currently reading aloud to our kids. So yes, our kids, kind of like what we were just sharing, go through phases as well. Yeah. And sometimes I kind of get too in my head about it where I'm like, why are my kids not loving reading as much as I do? Because I'm like, I model it for them and I we they have their own like big collection of books um, themselves. Uh, but yeah, I think it's normal, you know, just like as adults kind of can go in and out of it. So can kids and mm -hmm. like, and who's to say they won't become voracious readers, you know, mm -hmm. as they get a little bit older and right now they're just more interested in playing or, oh, yeah. you know, Legos or fill in the blank, you know, so it doesn't mean that they despise reading. <laughs> it's just maybe not their like yeah. number one choice most yeah. of the time. But yeah, I, I do try to make it like a, I mean, I think it's fun, obviously, to read. Um, but I try not to make it sound like chore for them because I feel like if I make it like this big planned thing and we're like, okay, now we're going to sit down with this big stack of books and read, they are like, no, thank you. So I think it's more like, hey, why don't you go grab a book for, for me? Or, yeah. you know, I want to read a book to you. Is that okay? Or like, you know, kind of like the phrasing that way. So I feel like then they'll be more open to... Mm -hmm. You know, and if we just start with one book, you know, then they're like, oh, I want to go get another one instead of it intimidating yeah. them and like having a giant stack of books that we're going to sit and read together. Yeah. So, um, so yes, we do read to our kids. I wish it was more. There was a point where I was reading to all of my kids a lot because they were very into it. For sure. Especially when they were more, when they were littler. Oh, yeah. When they would, when they were still very much lap sitters and they would just like, mm -hmm. I mean, I could read to them for like half of a day. It felt like, 
and I and I love that. So yeah. and they see us reading quite a bit. Yeah, like we're not afraid to read when they're still yeah around or awake. Yep. So they so see that we're modeling we're it. Hopefully that yep. they're gonna see that. Oh, mom and dad do that. They oh, seem to think cool. it's pretty fun. Yeah. Yep. So that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all you can ask. And for. our and our son does read on his own now, so that's been pretty cool. Um, where he can take ownership of that but of course it's still important to continue to read aloud to your kids even when they are reading themselves but um but yeah he'll he'll sometimes sit next to me you know with his own book then and and read in his head and you know he's pretty proud of himself um and we're very proud of him with that too and then i think there was oh, we have one more, more question here from nicole laura c okay. she said i've been following you guys on instagram for a while but i'm new to your youtube channel and i love it thank you mm -hmm. for discussion topics i'd love to hear your top five horror thriller and romance books those are my three favorite genres thank you <laughs> okay we're like okay it seems like we both really enjoy romance and thrillers both of us we're yeah. not big horror fans um however it's it's not that i i won't read it it's just i really have not read a lot of horror yeah. And sometimes I'm not interested based on like how gruesome something really gets because I'm like, I love psychological thrillers. I don't mind if there's murder in the mm -hmm. book or, you know, anything like that. But I mean, when it gets to like, when it's verging on yeah. like where I'm like feeling like sick to my stomach because something is just gross and I don't want to read it. That's why I don't always gravitate towards horror. But I will start with that genre. And Corey is reading a horror book I'm right currently now, reading. Too. If you have so, any good horror suggestions um, for us, yeah, please let, let us, us know. know. We may or may not check them out, but I'm always... It is you something know, like, I'm interested in. And we, yeah. as mood readers, I think like we like to read horror around like Halloween yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I like, mean, I read thrillers all the time, but like horror especially, I'm like, ooh, yeah. I can like use a really good So any good recommendations you that... Know? maybe would it be or be good to like as new horror readers yeah i was gonna say maybe like introduction to horror yeah <laughs> I, don't, I don't know um no, so, no creepy clowns i don't want to read yeah, it or anything you know no no <laughs> uh, same um so we couldn't come up with five uh but i grabbed two that i do personally have in my library corey has not read them so these would be good suggestions for you um but bird box is one uh you may have heard of it we actually saw the the Netflix um, adaptation of it movie. before I knew it was a book. So that's kind of a bummer because if I know something is a book first, I will nine times out of 10 read the book first, unless somebody told me that the book was like actually worse than the TV adaptation or the movie, yeah. which that does happen, but not often for me. I'm normally the person that's like the book was better. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed the, the movie um, of this the and movie the, was the good. book was very, very good. Yeah, so if you didn't know it was a so, book, here it is. So there you go, Bird Box. Um, and actually, <laughs> quick quick story. Pretty quick read, too. Um, I And then I know we have a lot of books to show you quickly, but um, I was supposed to go to an author event for this book. So the author of this book, and then like last minute, he had like a family emergency come up yeah, or something. So, so he couldn't come. And, and some of my book club and I were going to go, and we were just like so sad because it would have been my first author event. Good. And I have since been to a couple author events, so that's good. But I was very much looking forward to that one. So hopefully he makes his way back to our area because that would be very cool to get my book signed and to meet him. And then The September House is a great read. Um, I read this in September, I think, last fall. Of course, of course. Of course, I'm a mood reader. Um, and yeah, the cover is just really, really cool. If, like, a, if a month is in the title, <laughs> she's gonna read it like I'm that like, month. I'm like, I need like, to. Um, but yeah, it was very good. And I mean, I could almost say slightly humorous too. It was just, I don't know. Um, a woman is determined to stay in her dream home even after it becomes a haunted nightmare in this compulsively readable, twisty, and layered debut novel. So yeah, I yeah, I very much enjoyed it. Um, Would we'll check this one out. Um, and then let's see, what do we want to move on to next? Let's just go to the thrillers, thrillers. I guess. And then since if we're... you want to talk about at least a couple that we both have read, okay. So you want to talk about this Yeah, this one? is one that I just recently Amazon. finished. Mm -hmm. I know I talked about it a couple times, but just really good, fast-paced thriller. Short chapters. Who done it? Um, awesome. Just a really, really awesome ending. I mean, this book was really fast, Twisted fast picture. moving. You know, it wasn't a slow burn thriller. Fast moving, just with a lot of, uh, just with a lot of suspects. You know, it was a true like who done it thriller. Mm -hmm. So it'll keep you guessing and 
you're going to be just trying to figure out who did it the whole time. Mm -hmm. So that's when we've, we've both read. So he just read that one recently. I read it a while ago. And then, of course, you, you've seen this one yeah, a few times. We won't talk too much we've about talk, it. We've talked about that book a lot, but Home is Where the Definitely are. a must-check-out yep. book if you... Mm -hmm. If you like a twisty thriller. This is our one with the cool sprayed edges. Oh, this is, yeah, this is the special, the special edition. This is a Walmart, Walmart edition. It's got the red, sprayed edges and there's and a, a bloody, bloody hand print, print here. Mm -hmm. So we actually owned four different copies of the same book. We had five, but gave one away. We did give we did one give away. away. We're very, <laughs> very generous, yes. Um, so yeah, those are two that we have in common that we both read. Um, this one I want him to read very soon because I have not been able to shut up about this book. If you want, like a maybe, I guess I would say less traditional thriller. I would give this one a try. It's called Drowning. And this author actually has another book coming out in August that I will 100% be scooping up. I've read, this was her second book. So mm -hmm. her first one was called Falling. Mm -hmm. I did not enjoy that one as much as Drowning. I still very much enjoyed it. Um, but this book literally like made me like feel anxious, like almost the whole time. And maybe you don't want that kind of a mm -hmm. reading experience, but like, um, but yeah, it almost like felt like claustrophobic because drowning is actually one of my biggest fears. I don't have a lot of fears, but like drowning just freaks me out because you're like, you're literally like suffocating. So imagine being trapped in a plane way down in the depths of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you only so, have so much oxygen. Yes. So it's, it's very good. It's I remember suspenseful. the, the Sus chapters are very short. I live for short chapters. Um, and yeah, it was a book that I literally did not want to put down, didn't want to put down. So um, highly, highly recommend. And what's really cool is this author used to be um, a flight attendant. So she's a flight oh. attendant turned author. She was even writing maybe this book or I don't remember. Um, she was writing it Creepy. like yeah. on one of her flights at some point. So it's like she definitely knows firsthand what it's like to be a flight attendant and then can add that to her um, to her story. So she's a great writer. Um, I'm actually feeling like I want to reread this book uh, sometime this year because uh, it's just that good. Um, and then let's see, Listen for the Lie. I've talked a lot about this one too. I don't know if I've talked about it on, YouT on YouTube. We do have a, um, we do have a full review up on oh, YouTube. Oh, I do. I do have one. I almost, if you, yeah, if you want a full review. Um, there, I did do a full review here on YouTube for this mm -hmm. book. Um, so maybe I just won't say much about uh, much about it, but it's a podcast thriller, which those have kind of become um, sort of popular. I've read like maybe two now. Um, so if you're a podcast listener, it's kind of like a fun little element then that is added um, to this thriller because they go back and forth between the main character narrating the book and then portions of the podcast mm. where um, the... Um, what's it called, like the creator of the podcast or whatever, is interviewing, you know, suspects and whatever mm -hmm. and trying to solve a crime in this book. So this one was very good. Um, again, had a little bit of like some humor thrown in too. So I loved the main character in this book. Um, and then last but not least. Those are the five thrillers. Then. Oh, well, we have, wait, how many did I talk about? I already talked about five? No, I talked about four. Oh yeah. I about four. Not I have one more. Um, this was our very first book club reads. This one will always hold a special place in my heart, my in-person book club. It's called The Guest List by Lisa, uh, Lucy Foley. Um, and it's been my favorite book by her so far. Um, I also read The Paris Apartment by her. That's another good one. Um, but yeah, I think I did enjoy this one more and it created such good discussion for our book club. So by the way, if you're in a book club um, and you're looking for a book that I would think probably your whole book club would enjoy, or I would I would think so. This would be, this would go. be a good choice. Um, she did just come out with a new book, by the way, that I did buy. So I'm excited to read that one as well. Um, and then romance category. Yeah. Big. Is there any that you wanted to talk about that we just don't, that I don't have sitting here? Um, no, why don't you go through no? yours? Okay. I would say the couple of romances I have read recently, and the one I'm currently reading, is like, it's hey. hard to say, like, <laughs> you know, I would highly yeah. recommend them. Yeah, yeah. But I'm also into those kind of cheesier. You liked the I'm one the... that you brought up a couple different times. Yeah, there is one I read, um, The Kindred Spirit Kindred Supper Spirit Club, Supper. that was a very good book. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was it was different for me, but I really did enjoy it. Probably my favorite rom-com I've read so far. But yeah, I made... he's got he's to dive in a little more to the 
I mean, yeah. you, you are liking some I've of the I've kind of been reading the cheesy, but... I kind of like the cheesy rom-coms. Maybe not the best rom-coms, but the cheesy ones. One of these that I'm going to talk about, I'm making yeah. him read. She, she's got some soon. recommendations for me. Um, but not this one. I mean, I do recommend it to him, but he refuses to read it. Um, One True, one True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. She's one of my favorite authors. I am a Daisy Jones and the Six girl forever, Um, but I wouldn't put that into the romance category necessarily. So I picked this one by her. Um, yeah, it's like a second chance romance situation. I feel like that's all I'm really gonna say about it, but um, I love this. I cried multiple times during it. If you yeah. need a good cry. There is a movie out too. That oh yes. We, we watched the movie. We did movie. watch, more like you left about like halfway through. Yeah. You're like, nope, I'm done. It was, I mean, I will say it was a little bit on the cheesy side, but I, this was a situation where yes, I, I gave very much the preferred movie. the book yeah. over the movie. Um, and then funny story. This is the one I'm going to make him read because I have now read this book two times since April. So if that tells you something, and I'm not a big rereader. Uh, because I just think there's so many books out there that I need to read them all and it's hard for me to go back to something I've already read even if I loved it um, but I'm I'm obsessed with this book I'm like officially obsessed with this book and it's my favorite Emily Henry book um, and I think you need to give it a chance uh, and so yeah if you have yet to read Emily Henry it does not matter which book of hers you start with because hers are not like related to each other in any way, shape, or form. They're all completely different characters. There's no overlap. And they're all good. <laughs> yes. It's so from, you really cannot from what go you've wrong. Told me, they're all good. Um, I've rated all of her books five stars except for one, and that was still a four star read for me. So um, I don't. I, or did we talk about me not doing like star ratings anymore? Yeah, I no can't more stars. If we talked yeah. about that. But in my head, yeah, those you were, love them all. Yes, except yes. for one you. Just I just only love slightly love less, ish. right? Uh, but yeah, you honestly can't go wrong. But if I were going to tell you like which book I would start with, I'd say this one because I'm currently obsessed with it. And um, it's her newest one. Yes, it is her newest one. And then another author that is right up there with Emily Henry for me is Abby Jimenez. So those are my two favorite romance authors. Corey also needs to read this one um, just for the summer. So yeah, this is her newest book. Uh, has summer in the title, so no better time to pick it up than right now in the summertime. Yeah. The nice beachy. And you've recommended cover. that book to many people. I sure have. And have made many people read it, and they loved it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So her books, I devour. I read them very quickly. Um, what did you do? And then do the other one. She, right she gets another one in this pile. Actually, this was my favorite book of the entire year last year. So yours truly. Um, and you read like, a lot of books last year. <laughs> I sure did, and this got my number one spot. So favorite, favorite book. If that's not a recommendation, I don't know what uh, it is. So yeah, she's an incredible author. So is Emily Henry. Uh, what what they both do um, really really well is like touch on like mental health issues too. They're not mm -hmm. afraid to like to delve into that, even though these are they're light hearted in a lot of ways, and they are romance and they're funny and they have all of those elements, but they also go into like. Um, yeah, like mental health issues or just, mm -hmm. you know, things that are, that everyday people are struggling with and they're not afraid to talk about that. And it, that so that to me makes their books so relatable because mm -hmm. you can be like, I've struggled with that before. or And so the representation in these books is like phenomenal, I think. Um, so that's why I, I recommend both those authors to everybody. Um, and then Sophie Cousins has become a favorite for me too. The good part, I've recommended this book to many people. I love this cover, by the way. I mean, it's yeah. so pretty. Those um, that color combo, and this is an Ardvark title. We love Ardvark, um, but this, yeah, this is gonna end up being a reread for me probably pretty soon too. Um, I loved it very much. It, if you like um, time travel elements, uh, it has that. I've read one other book by her and liked this one more, but I can't wait to read her mm -hmm. other books. Um, so this one would fall into the romance uh, category, but has just other aspects you know with it too um if you're wanting like a closed door romance if that's you this is definitely a good mm -hmm. recommendation um so i want to make sure to say that but yeah love 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 this book i've i've told many many people to read it so i think yeah. so that's a lot of books so if it's you need books. if you need some books you need to some add book. to if your you tbr recommendations there you go <laughs> i'm sorry if we're making your tbr <laughs> TBR overflowing, but that's what we're here to do. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for that question. Yeah, just yeah, don't forget leave us a leave us a question. We'd love to answer it. Yep. 
because we need stuff to talk about. Yeah. I think that's it. That's it. So. We will see you next time.